Hi Booktube, Lynette here and today's video is going to be my May wrap up. So I'm going to talk to you only about some of the books that I've read in this month. I actually have done a reading vlog which is going to talk about two of the books. Um, so those two I'm not going to talk about. If you want to hear about those you'll need to wait for my reading vlog for which will be coming out next week. Um, so yes, yeah, so I'll just take you through a, a few of the stats that I've put together for this month. I managed to read nine books in total. I definitely had a clear favourite uh, of those nine books, um, but I will talk about that one a bit later on. Uh, I managed to read 3,142 pages and I listened to 24 hours of audio. Yes, that's right. I've listened to a lot of audio book this month which I'm really pleased with. I also had zero DNFs, so I finished every book that I started. Uh, in terms of format, I read one book in print, I read seven books in ebook format, and I had one audiobook, which was the entire, not quite the entire 24 hours, but yes, mostly 24 hours. The genres that I read covered romance, contemporary, historical, fantasy, uh, and young adult. Um, because I actually kind of had a little bit of a focus on series this month, uh, one of the books actually started a new series, five of the books that I read continued um, series that I'd already started, and one of the books finished a series that I had ongoing. Uh, other than that, the other two books, one was a standalone book, and the other is not a series, um, but it is the first book in a set of companion novels uh, written by the author. Um, and yes, I am currently loving, I've restarted my Kindle Unlimited subscription, and I am currently really loving um, being back on that. That has actually helped me with some of the series um, updates. So, without further ado, Let's talk about the books. Now, the first book that I finished for the month, I'm not going to talk about because it is one of the ones that is included in the reading vlog. So we're going to move straight on to the second book that I finished. And in fact, we're going to talk about the second, third, fourth and fifth because they are all part of a series. And this is the Six Pack Ranch series written by Vivian Arend. This is a series I started back in 2012. Uh, it's following a bunch of... Um, Canadian cowboys and uh, set just near the Rocky Mountains I think they where they live um, and it starts off initially with a group of brothers who are finding their happy ever afters with women who either they've long term had a crush on or have recently um, met so and it's all about that and these final four books actually finish off the series um, and it brings back um, and finalises a happy ever after for two characters from the previous generation. Um, and yeah, it's all about uh, love and friendship and family um, and forgiveness in some cases, uh, because there's a couple of things that have happened in here that, um, that have happened in previous books where they, the stories are continued uh, into one of the last couple of these books um and yeah i thoroughly enjoyed them they are steamy romances so if you love a little bit of heat with your romance then these definitely have it um and i thoroughly enjoyed them i thoroughly enjoyed being back in the world and i'm really pleased i have actually managed to knock a series off of my tbr at last and that is all thanks to being back with kindle unlimited because they were all available on there the next book that I finished was the first of my two book club picks. Uh, yes, I am now in two book clubs. Uh, so I'm still in the Just One More Page book club run by Jess over at Jess McGlynn. But I have also joined the Cliterature Club, which is being run by Steph over at Steph Loves. The Cliterature Club is for uh, those of us who love steamy romance. Um, and yeah, the... the um, books are all going to be romance novels. Our first pick, our uh, very first pick, is the one that we had for the month of May and that is The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This is following the uh, coming together of Stella and Michael. Stella has Asperger's, um, she is on the autism spectrum 
and she is quite successful at the job that she does because she's able to channel um, her Asperger's into it um, and she's found a way to make it positive which I absolutely love the representation my nephew is autistic um, so it's really great to start seeing representation uh, coming into novels um, and I'd love to see more of it so if you have any recommendations please leave them in the comments box down below because I really would love to read more um, autism representation disability representation so thoroughly loved it anyway she then come she then decides that actually she needs some practice at sex because she thinks she's not good at it um, and this is one of the, the trigger warnings so some description there is some light description of previous experiences which to me represented rape um, which I know is a trigger certainly um, the circumstances in which Stella found herself in were personal triggers for me um, there isn't it doesn't go into detail it's more that she is explaining her past to Michael who is an escort that she is asking to help her with lessons to get better um, he's adamant that actually she doesn't need lessons that she just needs the right man and yes I completely agree with that um, because Michael is definitely the right man um, so yeah so it's all about how Michael is obviously trying to resist um, getting involved because he thinks that um, he's too much like his father who is um, a user of women um, and he doesn't want to be that man so he's trying to stay away from relationships um, Stella is trying to learn not realizing as well not really acknowledging that she's growing feelings for Michael um, and it's all about the push and pull and about how they finally sort things out realize that actually uh, they do belong together and they do want a relationship and yeah I thoroughly enjoyed it it was really sweet um, it was really fun and I definitely definitely am interested in reading the other books um, I think this is the one that's a companion series so um, Helen Huang has set has written um, books I think set um, with with other people um, in their surroundings so I'm really looking forward to eventually picking those up as well um, and I definitely would recommend these books I'm going to skip the next book that I finished and move right on to the next one after that and this is one that I was really hoping to have a physical copy to show you but I don't quite have it yet that book is Love You Like That by Scarlett Cole and this is my favourite read of the month um, and I absolutely loved this book and I think Scarlett Cole is very quickly becoming a new um, favourite romance author. This is the fourth book in the series following um, a band called The Sad Fridays. They are from Manchester in England and it's about them finding their happy ever afters. We are following Alex in this book who is pansexual and we are following Zoe um, who is deaf um, and is learning to live with being deaf because it's it's a gradual process that's been happening to her over some time um, but she hasn't realized until it starts to affect her life um, Alex uh, offers to set Zoe up um, on a one-night stand and to find a hookup for her because she's not really wanting to um, explore relationships only what happens is that Alex has a growing attraction with Zoe. Zoe has a growing attraction to Alex. Both think that neither wants the other. So it's not miscommunication, um, but it is misplaced um, thoughts. And it was just so much fun because they had they had a really good, fun friendship. Alex was really invested in trying to help Zoe. Um, and he was certainly one of the few people in Zoe's life that wasn't trying to tell her how she should move forward with other things that were happening but was fully supportive of her when she chose to talk about it um, and then and then make choices and make um, move forwards with those things in her life uh, so yeah she it did I did really really love this book I had no idea um, what being a pansexual meant um, before going into this book I'll be honest 
I probably still don't. However, I do think that obviously this is a book that has representation in it. Um, the only thing that I really took away from the book, and I'm really sorry because I know Scarlett Cole was actually trying to give more representation than this, um, but being pansexual is more about hearts than parts. Um, so they're not bi, they're not bisexual. Um, they're more invested in the person and their personality rather than their male, female, trans, however they identify. It's not about how they identify, it's about the person inside. I think I've understood it. If I've misunderstood it, please correct me down below um, because, yeah, we, we should... We should know and understand these things about each other um, and be able to talk uh, without wanting, without worrying about offending. So yes, so I'm sorry if I have got it wrong, please correct me. I'm always happy to be corrected about these things. Uh, but yes, I did absolutely love this book. Um, it's my favourite book of the month. I'm still thinking about it and I'm looking forward to having a physical copy to go on my shelves with the previous three books. And then Ben's story, who is the final band member, is going to be coming later on this year as well. So I'm looking forward to that one. I've already got the ebook on pre-order. And the final book that I'm going to talk about this month is the second of the book club picks. So this is the um, Just One More Page book club pick. And our um, prompt word for picking the book this month, I think, was Storm. Um, so we decided to go with maybe like weather themes, things like that. And we went for The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. In my usual excellent style, um, I finished this book 10 minutes before the uh, discussion um, over Zoom. Um, so it was quite fresh in my mind at that point because I had a, I had three quarters. One thing I didn't tell um, Jess, and if you're watching this, Jess, I actually read three quarters of the book um, in those four or five hours that I was reading Um before the live before our chat uh so <laughs> i should have had more to say than i did although i think i was quite chatty for a change um but yes this is about a young woman um it starts in uh 1920s very late 1920s um and it's about elsa who makes a choice which affects the rest of her lives um it then skips forward to the 1930s um and we're starting through um what's known as the dust bowl in america um it was a time of drought they'd had the depression um and it's considered the worst environmental disaster that america has seen uh, basically there was drought um and lots of people in this in the southern states like and mid states like texas and arkansas um, they just failed to be able to grow um, any crops because the winds was just stripping the land of um, any any good soil and there was also no rain to feed it either. Um, so it's about Elsa who then has to make a choice about whether she stays and perseveres on the land that she loves uh, with her in-laws um, or does she travel... Um, towards California, um, where it's supposedly the land of milk and honey, um, to see what life she can make for herself there. And it's about what happens um, after those choices. This is one of those books that I think you enjoy the experience, you don't enjoy the actual story. Um, I can't really say very much about the story because it would spoil it for you um, other than that. And yeah, it's definitely one, I think I would probably read it again at some point. I'm definitely intrigued by um, the history side of it to want to look um, more into detail. Um, and maybe um, I think on the uh, book club, um, the ladies that are from America, they definitely said maybe you should go and read The Grapes of Wrath uh, by John Steinbeck because that's more of an accurate telling of um the depression and the dust bowl um so yes that's definitely um john steinbeck was on the reading list when i was at school uh but we read uh, the pearl instead um i think the grapes of wrath actually came in later years for others uh, they read different ones every year for us um and yeah it's um yeah it's about friendship it's about female friendship, um, it's about mother-daughter relationships, um, 
and how they can be formed um, and the things that can affect them. Uh, there are a couple of characters in here which were a bit questionable in my mind. Um, they were, and I think the way we talked about it was maybe one of the characters was a bit too modern um, in the way they were written. Uh, so yeah, so there's, um, it is a good book um, and I do recommend it. Um, and I'm probably going to be handing this over to my mum to say I think maybe you might enjoy this. Um, but it's definitely one I'm going to hang on to um, and put and keep on my shelves for a while uh, because I think I probably will reread it at some stage. So those were all the books that I picked up in the month of May. I hope May was a really good reading month for you. Like I say, um, there are two more books to talk about, but I actually have a reading vlog for those. Um, and you'll see that next week um so yeah so let me know what you read in may have you read any of these books what did you think of them and yeah i'd love to hear from you all if you've enjoyed this video then please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and if not already then please subscribe to the channel i love having new subscribers and if you don't already know i make videos they go up every monday at 6 30 p.m uk time and i look forward to seeing you all in the next one Bye.